Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's Elephant Professional Lecture here live on Zoom and on Facebook, which is a, something a bit of a miracle after what happened last week. So I'm very glad to have you have you here. And today we will be re in, revisiting the uh, the topic of human elephant coexistence or human elephant conflict but it's definitely coexistence in this stage some people use conflict some people use coexistence and one of the great trends is more and more people are moving towards the word coexistence and starting to think about it as a as a holistic problem and one where you have to live together we are here together surviving together is the uh, is the hashtag of one of the projects we support so in order to learn more about human elephant conflict um, and it is it is a very big subject here in thailand at the moment and thailand is actually one of the relatively well-off countries in terms of conflict and coexistence um, it's it's fairly light compared with some places like india and sri lanka but yet in the last week i think we've had one one person killed in kanchanaburi a monk uh, and then just last night someone in far northwest right at the other side of the country northeast sorry far other side of the country um, was injured in a rubber plantation and, and luckily has survived and was saved by his wife so uh, it's clearly something that is a problem if we are going to live with elephants and we're going to work as hard as we can to conserve elephants and hope that their numbers rise do we hope the numbers rise I, I do I hope the scientists do as well we have to uh, we have to look into to see how to try and keep try and keep this coexistence happening um, and as our guest today, Dr. Pichet, will tell you. Uh, I don't Pichet, he's not a doctor yet, but we may as well. We're among friends, we'll call you doctor. Um, we'll tell you there are many great scientists working all over Thailand to address this problem. And what has, what has happened is they've put together this a project called the Thai Human Elephant Coexistence Project, which has been now been running for one year. And what they've done is they've talked to all the scientists, or as many as they can find, and talked to all the situations and tried to write, it's not a manual, because uh, no two human elephant coexistence situations are the same, um, but it's to try a, a book which outlines all of the human elephant coexistence situations they can find in Thailand and all of the uh, all of the solutions that are being used, some of which work and some of which are not so effective, and try to bring us all into a direction where we might be able to, uh, might be able to to choose, I guess, and to try and more effectively work together and live together with elephants. Um, I hope that describes what's going on. Without further ado, I will hand you over to Ajahn Bichet and he will tell you all about human elephant conflict situation management in Thailand from the Thai Human Elephant Coexistence Project. Thank you very much for joining us and please let us know, please tell us all about it. Okay. Uh, good uh, evening, uh, all audience. Uh, today, I would like you to uh, know about human elephant conflict in Thailand and management in Thailand. Uh, I actually the head of the project of Thailand Human Elephant Coexistence Project, and today I as a representative of all of my team in East Side. So today. Uh, we want to tell the story about how we manage and how we work in Thailand. Uh, actually, many guy, many elephant guy in Thailand, but uh, we also a group that uh, concerned about human dimension and uh, community participation uh, in Thailand for SEC management. Today, I, I would like to tell a story about the overview of human elephant conflict in Thailand. Uh, and also the second is a Thailand human elephant co coexistence project. Uh, this is the first phase that uh, we want to build up the network of uh, human elephant conflict research to manage the better research in the future. So the first phase, we want to investment on uh, human to be the local researcher. And the third issue, uh, we briefly to tell about the gap and future work, work in Thailand. This is the, the uh, 
the number that uh, we uh, Asian Elephant Specialist Group uh, assess uh, led by Mr. Wayupak Kitwijak in 2017. Uh, IUCN Specialist and Elephant Professional and DNG Department of Wildlife Conservation um, together to, to access uh, all elephant population in Thailand uh, from literatures and uh, guest estimation and gray literature. Uh, you can see uh, this is uh, the, the yellow color is uh, the protected area in Thailand and the number under this letter in Thai letter, okay, uh, is tell about uh, the, the, est the guest estimation about the uh, elephant population in Thailand. You see uh, in the Western forest complex is uh, have a lot of uh, strong uh, elephant population here and maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, this forest can support elephant in long term but uh, there are some fragment area in the north part and the southern part of Thailand so uh, maybe uh, we, we have the uh, first uh, the serious situation maybe in, in the south and the north population in Thailand. But in, in the west of Thailand and eastern of Thailand population is here. Uh, I think it's maybe healthy. Uh, from our estimation, uh, wild elephant uh, have about 3,000 or 3,500 3, individuals in Thailand. Uh, I will show you uh, how about conflicts, uh, human elephant conflict situation in Thailand from our study size uh, from five area in Thailand. Uh, we select uh, the, the hotspot site to assess human elephant conflict in Thailand. In Westcom, we assess in Salakla, you know, uh, in this in this area and Khao Yai. National Park and Gang Kajan uh, Forest Compact around here and Eastern Forest Compact and in the southern side, in the southern, uh, we assessed uh, in Khao Luang Khao Bantat Forest Compact. Uh, we use uh, the method by dialogue with the uh, local villager that attend us around 202 people. And we assess the head EC situation in each area by asking the question and perception of local people around protected area. And this is the result that uh, we, we will uh, from the past. Uh, now we have 51 head EC sites from 71 protected area in Thailand that uh, confront the HEC situation now. And you can see the number uh, HEC site increase every year. And if we, we can create the HEC site in Thailand, is, uh, it increased by 10 areas per year since 2003. Uh, the conflict situation in Thailand actually uh, most occur in uh, West, Western Forest Compact, you see in this area and Eastern Forest Compact along here and Gangkrojan Forest Compact. Uh, we confront with the uh, elephant cooperating uh, and elephant destroyed the house in Thailand and most of elephant come out of the forest um, to uh, destroy the crop, especially rice, cassava, and corn. Uh, they just walk by in the community and, and uh, some group, now some group of elephant in Eastern Forest Compass uh, stay outside the area all the time. They, they, they don't come back to the forest, they just uh, stay in the forest, then and uh, 
when the when uh, the, the night come, they uh, they just come out come out the come out the forest fragment to ready to crop. And this is the number of the HEC that increase every forest complex that we uh, monitor, and now uh, it increased by twenty four percent from two thousand eighteen. And this is show about uh, 24 provinces that confront with the uh, HEC in Thailand, uh, and it keep increasing every year. And this number show the human elephant deaths or injury between uh, 2012 uh, to 2019. Uh, it uh, it's made, it might uh, a small number for for the large country, but uh, in our country, it seems serious for our Thai people because the uh, Thai people love elephant and uh, elephant uh, as a picture of uh, our national symbol and uh, elephant also the symbol in the Buddhist uh, religion. So when we see the elephant, uh, attack the people or the people uh, die from elephant is a very sad news and uh, we also want to, uh, to resolve this problem in Thai society. Uh, this is uh, the percentage of that, uh, the cause of human death and injury in Thailand. I al also highlight uh, the main cause in, in Thailand that uh, uh, people die from uh, the elephant die from uh, uh, the cause. Uh, this is a uh, the the highest percent that uh, people die from elephant. Uh, uh, elephant is uh, elephant attack the people uh, in the field, and for the injury, uh, uh, people injured injured by elephant when uh, in travel by cars or motorcycle. And the cause of elephant death and injury, uh, uh, the most caught is erratic trends at 22% and uh, elephant injuries by car crash, 57%. And this is a percent of elephant come out of protected area based on religious perception. Uh, in Khao Luang, uh, we count and uh, we, we can calculate the percent from the whole population that uh, allow 45% and Gang Kajan 36 Eastern Forest and Complex uh, 23%, uh, Wavecom 22%, and Khao Yai 12%. And this is the attitude of villager toward wild elephant. Uh, you can see that uh, Thai people might not uh, have a lot of negative attitude for elephant. They just uh, in 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 our uh, talk and dialogue, they, they 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 don't want to hurt elephant. They just uh, need to find a way to 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 solve this problem. So it's a reflect on uh, the percent of the attitude that uh, elephant uh, people want to want. Uh, they need some fact. To, to solve this problem. An opinion of literature on the cause of elephant come out of the forest. The first one is uh, habitat encroachment and fragmentation. Uh, this tell us about what? It tell us about that uh, villager exactly, uh, they, they know uh, which cause of uh, uh, that uh, read the elephant come out of the forest. Uh, they, they know about the uh, habitat encroachment and forest fragmentation. And for the mitigation in Thailand, uh, Thai people use elephant cutting, especially communal cutting. Uh, they use fry cracker, uh, burning tie, and using banking tin, something like that, uh, to, to cutting elephant. And they also have the process to exchange the idea. This is these two uh, 
uh, we use a lot of uh, in many places to to exchange the the method to to repay our fan. So it's reflect on that that uh, community exchange the idea to uh, to seek uh, the best idea to to protect their crop. And we also found that uh, many uh, government sector and NGO also do research in in in, uh, in the area. And many area in Thailand we have also. Uh, habitat improvement activity for elephant, and uh, we have a finance mechanism like a compensation, but it has many standards, uh, and this issue is really really a hot topic in Thailand because uh, we we want to find the uh, the standard one of compensation and the best one to to compensate for agriculture uh, for villager. Uh, the purpose of villager for HEC management in, in, in this research, uh, they, they want to increase community participation to, to solve HEC problem in Thailand. They need to involve in this problem. And they want uh, government to improve uh, their management, like uh, uh, they want uh, government to open the, the spread for management uh, together with local villager. And they really want uh, uh, the standard compensation for uh, local people. If we uh, review and uh, look in the past in Thailand, uh, before 2000, uh, we have only uh, traditional method about crop gardening. And from 2000 to 2006, uh, 2010, we also use uh, passive deterrent like uh, electric, electric fence and fence. Uh, and from 2010 to, to current, to uh, the current uh, situation, uh, we have many methods in Thailand and I, I I think that uh, we move from uh, conflict to uh, conflict of coexistence co balance in, in Thailand now because uh, many uh, sector and many community concerned about elephant. They, they also concerned about welfare of elephant and things. Uh, so they use a lot of method to, uh, to solve this problem such as the habitat manipulation defense and uh, elephant surveillance to, to make a call early warning system and also uh, find an alternative path to living with elephant. In the second part, uh, as, you, as you see that in, in the past research that uh, uh, lead by Mr. Chisunuwa Manisi Kham, uh, he uh, assess uh, uh, villager attitude and opinion uh, to see the uh, human elephant conflict situation in Thailand. And now uh, we see from, from that research that uh, we need to empower local people uh, to solve the problem by themselves. But it's very uh, hard to do that. Uh, so we, we think that uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, to see it as a ecosystem, you know. Uh, I think uh, in eco ecosystem of conflict, we have to, to look a lot of uh, uh, aspect and dimension to solve this problem. We cannot look only at human, uh, human dimension. Uh, we, we also look at ecological aspect too. So uh, uh, this is uh, our hypothesis that uh, we uh, have to transform from ecosystem of conflict to ecosystem of uh, coexistence. Uh, but we have to study and action 
uh, in various uh, dimension to transform from conflict to coexistence. Uh, especially one in the first phase of our uh, project, we uh, concentrate on uh, human elephant interaction and human human interaction. Uh, as uh, I told you before in, in, uh, in the past slide that uh, uh, in the past, uh, the scientists or the research uh, call as an uh, academic do the research by themselves. But I think in the last scale of human elephant conflict in Thailand, we uh, want uh, uh, many people uh, to be researcher because in adaptive system of human elephant conflict, I think uh, every people that involved need to be uh, the researcher, need to have knowledge and need to have learning to for uh, adapt as uh, so you can uh, adapt <laughs> with elephant with elephant uh, learning uh, so i think uh, in the past uh, only academic uh, can be the researcher so the present uh, we try to build up uh, every local people to be a researcher. Uh, this strategy might be uh, resolved human elephant man management in long term. Uh, this is the conceptual idea about our project that uh, we try to uh, working together to uh, co-research uh, to community based research uh, by three partner or three, or three party uh, the best important uh, the, the most important is a uh, local researcher uh, we build up the local researcher by uh, we have mentor in the field mentor of researcher in the field uh, the mentor helps to analyze equation and input knowledge about uh, scientific uh, study for local researcher. And me as the scientist or facilitator help to analyze as question and also input the knowledge. But uh, for scientists, we, we uh, bring back some information from the field to uh, analyze in statistical way or present uh, them for uh, local, uh, present uh, some data for local researcher to, to know about the elephant behavior. And we also connect uh, author stakeholder uh, to learning together with local researcher. So with this ecosystem of co-research, uh, we can uh, adapt uh, with elephant behavior in the field. And for, for the method that uh, we try to to uh, to find the right question for each view. Uh, uh, we use this approach to to find the list of problem statement in each uh, community in Thailand. Uh, the first one is uh, we have the field survey and set up the community consultation in the area, and we use the community based research tool such as timeline and is it historical elephant distribution review from uh, older people in, in, the, in the community and uh, to find the right question for local research. But uh, many times we, we confront the problem about the uh, uh, villager cannot uh, express their idea freely when uh, they confront with the government agency. They confront with the older people. So, we solve this problem by uh, by bringing the affected people or local people that want to participate in this research uh, to the dialogue session, small dialogue this session, so they can freely express their idea and also uh, tell about their uh, their genuine 
i d e a e n g i n e e n n e e d for research in 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 the local area and for this process we we uh, get the problem statement and research question in 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 six area and as as i show you that salapa uh, uh, community one uh, to do about head ec monitoring and and they want to find potential cross to live with elephant in Tong Pao Phum, the west of Thailand, uh, they want to find an, uh, also find to find alternative tolerance crop to live with elephant. In Kuiwuli, they want to set up community gardening, and also <laughs> they they also want uh, alternative plants to live with elephant. In Thai Long Yen, in the south of Thailand, uh, they set up. They want to set up community garden and um, test about uh, spotlight, uh, the effective of spotlight to uh, reveal the elephant. In Phu Luang, uh, uh, this is uh, the, the huge area. So uh, we accept uh, all of network in, in uh, Phu Luang. And villagers really want to, to do about research about the community, community communal garden between uh, villager and rancher. They want they really want to set the standard to repeal elephant in peace way. And in Khao Yai, uh, local people want to uh, monitor ele uh, human elephant conflict and use this data to do about uh, wildlife washing and also use the data to uh, make and for the first phase in Khao Yai National Park, uh, many of you might uh, ever come to Khao Yai. Uh, it's uh, the east, north, northeastern of Thailand around here, and it's also the world heritage of Thailand. Uh, uh, this this research in, in Khao Yai National Park, uh, we have many stakeholders here uh, who partic uh, participate in this research, especially in Sri Lan, uh, Khao Phang Ma, Non Hunting Area, and Khao Yai National Park. Uh, in this area, uh, local villagers uh, set up the farm based monitoring uh, to see. Uh, when elephant coming in the, in, the, in the farm, and they also record the time and frequency of elephant. And they also have a night patrol uh, to pinpoint the wildlife in community, and also record the hotspot of wildlife and elephant. And this is, and this area, uh, uh, they have, they also have cow operation, so, uh, local villager also pinpoint uh, the cow distribution and elephant distribution in the area. For preliminary pre pre result in, in this area, uh, villagers set up their own way to monitor cat EC and cow's uh, population in the area. And it is good news for us that uh, Villager promise not to use violent method against elephant in this area. They not use gun and fire character. They 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 just stop to use it. They just uh, uh, ride the car and talk to elephant and uh, point the spotlight to the elephant uh, just like that. And uh, is this a good chance that uh, they correct the data in in this map and see which point they can uh, make a spot for wildlife watching activity from this research data uh, and now they, they 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 just keep going beyond our research they just uh, set up the enterprise group to to do the ecotourism activity in the area uh, another area, uh, Phu Luang Wildlife Sanctuary, it, 
is also not east of Thailand around here. And this research uh, lead by Phu uh, Luang Wildlife Research Station and DNT. Uh, this area also want to, to mapping elephant trail and elephant uh, distribution uh, out of protected area. And they also set up the systematic data collection uh, cooperated by community and rangers together. Uh, you know that uh, in Thailand, is this, this uh, activity happened really, really rarely because uh, uh, ranger and community in Thailand, yeah, they have a different point of view and different method to, to deal with elephant. And this is a good side of human elephant conflict management in Thailand because ranger and community working together uh, to solve this problem to find a way and find this management strategy for human elephant conflict in Thailand. And this team of uh, community want to build the safety elephant guarding uh, protocol in this area. So I think uh, uh, this team is very, very uh, amazing for, for me. And for the result, uh, uh, we just uh, pinpoint, uh, let me see distribution allow full long wildlife sanctuary. And they also uh, setting up network of local guarding team in, in Phu Luang now. And uh, we proud that uh, they use like a scientist, uh, we have, uh, they have evaluation session uh, when, when they have the guarding activity, they repeal the elephant and they come together uh, to think about uh, how we improve uh, the guarding effectiveness in the future and uh, in the team uh, in the next time, uh, which one we want to, uh, to, to add in to improve the effectiveness of, of guarding and repairing elephant in the future. Insula Park Wildlife Sanctuary uh, in the West, Western Forest Complex of Thailand. Uh, this research led, led by uh, Success L and Slap Park Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, uh, this, this area uh, community want to uh, test about uh, spotlight and sound speaker. And they set up the, the perimeter of uh, spotlight and sound speaker uh, around the top. And the, the preliminary result, the uh, villagers report that uh, it can keep elephant at the bay. And uh, they have uh, a lot of time to sleep <laughs> when compared from the past. And a villager feel safe when traveling because uh, in, you know, in, in this village, uh, they, they some some point they have uh, they have no electric electricity, so uh, the solar cell and spotlight help help them a lot to uh, to to feel safety from elephant and they can uh, see the elephant uh, travel across the road. Uh, another site in Western Forest Compact is Kong Pakpu National Park. Uh, uh, this area community uh, choose about uh, to find finding the alternative crop that elephant cannot eat. Uh, they survey uh, the plant in the community and they found that uh, around twenty plant species uh, that elephant uh, uh, the the elephant don't want to eat. And when they found the, the, the plant that elephant cannot eat, they just uh, try to, um, to, to plant it and to processing and marketing it in, uh, to, to sell the, the product. And this is uh, the result from, from marketing that 
uh, research team try to uh, sell to make money and uh, compensate uh, for the for for the part that they lost from elephant and uh, the coffee uh, is is the most product that uh, they can sell in 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 this month in September and black pepper elephant uh, also not interested to eat uh, black pepper and turmeric uh, for this for this community uh, uh, turmeric uh, also. <laughs> Uh, make a pro, uh, make a product and sell to to make the money for for community. And this team also uh, set up the uh, enterprise school for uh, making the elephant friendly product in the area. So uh, for this project, I think uh, they can uh, keep going and do research, and they also. Uh, find their funding for, for themselves in, in, in a short period. Uh, but in the long term, uh, this group uh, want uh, some stakeholders to support the knowledge about uh, the processing and product uh, transformation and also marketing online and marketing uh, to, to sell the product uh, for global because uh, they, they want to, to expand their elephant friendly product uh, for, for their research school. And uh, this research, uh, uh, we, we have the partner uh, with the uh, Soup Foundation and coffee, uh, Changpa coffee in the area. For Thai Long Yen, uh, uh, this team uh, uh, have, have the question about the uh, uh, they can use the spotlight to control the pathway or not uh, to, to minimize the damage from elephant. And they uh, try to recording the elephant present and use the spotlight to, uh, to control the pathway of elephant. And from, from the preliminary result, they, uh, they just report us that they can uh, success to control the pathway of the elephant. And some nearby villagers beginning to adopt this technique uh, now. And this is the map of uh, elephant uh, pathway that uh, the team tried to uh, control the pathway from, from this uh, village to, to this village and they just uh, push the elephant uh, back to the forest. And uh, for the full reasons, uh, uh, we, we have the final presentation in February. So uh, we, we may uh, uh, rise on Facebook to, to show our research again in February next year. For the, uh, Another area is uh, Kuiburi National Park. Uh, this area, uh, they want to uh, find the, the life livelihood to, to live with elephant. They just uh, use uh, many uh, methods to, uh, uh, to live with elephant. They try to find the right uh, livelihood by uh, using uh, data correction about uh, elephant frequency and also uh, crop uh, defending in the area. Uh, which one is the, the, the free for one in the area? And they, the finally, they just uh, found that uh, most of local people want to change to an alternative crop. And now they uh, have the experiment in the area, and we have the partner to want to uh, to see the result uh, in the Kuiburi area that uh, the Bring Elephant Home found, uh, Foundation, and uh, is this is a very good uh, one that uh, we have the colleague in the area. Okay. Uh, 
uh, from the research output uh, in this first phase, uh, I think uh, uh, the core research, uh, this, this approach can build the local researcher in the area. And when we have the local research in the area, um, they maybe uh, turn to be a head EC manager in area and maybe uh, turn to be a shanking agent in the area. I think this is important because uh, uh, we, we cannot uh, find the resource to, to solve every place uh, at the area in Thailand. Uh, we, we really need uh, many people to participate. And uh, another solution that uh, we, we try to build up in this research is the safety elephant guarding will be established in, in this uh, research. For all uh, of our research, uh, we have the forum uh, in, in the past uh, three months. Uh, we exchanged the idea about uh, research finding and uh, we also find the potential stakeholder to, to working together from this uh, network of uh, research in our country. And we try to use this uh, forum to train our local researcher to present uh, their research in, in this uh, forum. Uh, so uh, our head EC uh, management network uh, uh, can uh, generate local researcher. And I think uh, if we uh, can work together like this, uh, I think we have uh, the future together to, to, uh, to solve the head EC problem in, in the future. Uh, for this finding, we also uh, bring the findings from research and proposal from local uh, people to propose for government about uh, HEC policy in Thailand. And is this, uh, I think in Thailand is for policy uh, formation, is this a wrong process? And I think we, really needs more research about HEC management in Thailand to, to answer the question about something like uh, compensation, uh, the law about uh, human elephant interaction in the buffer zone. And we also want uh, some mechanism uh, between uh, local people and government can work together in the future. Uh, this is really, really hot issue and really uh, needed of uh, local people in Thailand that they want uh, some mechanism can, can work with government for head EC management in Thailand. Uh, like I, I, I told you that uh, we have gap and future work, a lot of future work that we, we try to, to do. We need government sector to work with us and need more support from local and central government and need more resources to empower local people to be a shaping agent for HDC management. And I think uh, this research about HDC management, we want uh, multidisciplinary research, not only for scientists, we also want social scientists. We also want uh, 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 campaign activists to to do to to work with us because uh, it have many dimension for HEC management. Uh, I think uh, only scientists cannot solve this problem. And for our research, uh, we we have uh, the website for update our research and elephant education for people as this website. But now. We, we have only Thai language. Uh, in the future, we will try to update in English version to, to uh, present our work for your guy for all, all over the world. And thank you for all partners and contributors, especially uh, Thailand Science Research and if uh, research, uh, and also National Research Council of Thailand and Department of Wildlife Plan 
and conservation and what I like what I look away institution and all, uh, we also thank for all partner and uh, advisor for for this project uh, Dr. Kunsak uh, Makala Philom, Dr. Mathana Sikacha, and Mr. Shisunuwat Manisi Kham, and Dr. Pikachai Kulishkai, and Miss Miss Duong Thong. Thank you, uh, every people. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> how how much time I, I talk about this. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. And, and I see we have some good questions coming up as well. Uh, um, first of all, a question from me um, before we lead into um, some other questions from the Zoom. Um, so great. I think science is is um, fantastic. You're doing it scientifically and monitoring it and 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 actually watching the, the looking to looking to publish the results long term your do your local researchers do they have you had someone do they get their names on papers when when they're published in the international journals and um have you had any express interest in in actually coming to do formal more formal qualifications like a like a, a bsc or a master's or something along those lines yes yes we, we want uh, to to publish uh, our work and uh, we try to to uh, published in, in next year, uh, especially uh, the overview of uh, human elephant conflict situation in Thailand and uh, the potential work that can publish uh, like uh, uh, the test of spotlight or the test of uh, uh, control the elephant part where I, I think uh, they have potential to publish in uh, international uh, scientific journal. And we also want, uh, in the future, we also want a student to or at least or author researcher to to participate with us. And your your local researchers will get their names on the paper? Yes, yes. Okay, so next I, yeah. Next uh next we have a question I think from Georgina. Um who, uh, who can you unmute yourself, Georgina, because you're in the room and you can ask your question and then we've got Antoinette's question after that. Hi, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. I'm very excited to listen uh, as I'm about to move to Thailand. Um, I just wondered about your locals. How do you choose your local research assistants you want to train? Uh, is it just people that are just generally interested in your project or um, do you target uh, people that specifically have bad attitudes and that have had bad experiences of human elephant conflict? Uh... In, in the first round, uh, we just uh, try and uh, go to the field and uh, see which people interested in this issue. And another process, we, we look into the field with, with them and uh, listen uh, about their ideas and about their attention. Mm. And, and then we, we, we get someone that uh, really, really interested in this issue and want to, to resolve this problem. So uh, we use uh, this question as a, like a snowball to other people and get mm -hmm. a community meeting. Uh, but the first one, uh, uh, I, I think uh, we should have a small group of people because uh, if we, we have a large group of people, we we, we cannot identify which, uh, which uh, local people really, really want to do to, to, to solve this problem because uh, uh, many people to come to this meeting, they just, uh, someone just like to talk, you know, and <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> like to, uh, to, to push at, to, to, to solve problem, not, 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 not we, uh, we have a lot our session to uh, select uh, local people to, to be local researcher. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Antoinette, do you want to go? Hello. 
Well, thank you so much for the excellent presentation. Um, I really enjoyed it and I really admire your participatory approach. It's really inspiring. Um, I was wondering from your example from Pulawang, where you established that uh, collaboration between rangers and community members. Do you know what was the process to kind of bridge that gap and to um, start that collaboration? And do you know of any initiatives that um, that has been started in other areas where there is that conflict? Uh, I, I, I cannot hear your voice. Maybe uh, all can can speak again. Sorry. Yeah, you're. Um, you um, I I can read your question, Antoinette, because you you typed it first. I, you were very you are very quiet. Um, Thank you very much, Danny. <laughs> sorry, Antoinette. Um. <laughs> So Antoinette writes, hello from South Africa. Thank you for the excellent presentation and important work. From your example of collaboration between rangers and communities in Pool Luang, do you know what was the process to bridge the gap between the rangers and the community? And can this process be used in other areas where there is a conflict between rangers and local people? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I think it's also the, uh, the one factor is a uh, personality of, of ranger that uh, we select. Uh, the head of project, the project, uh, he, Jira Chai, uh, he, Nong, uh, he is very, very uh, uh, have, a, have, a, have a strong mind and also uh, compromise mind to, to talk with people. Uh, this, uh, Help us a lot because uh, we in in this project uh, we we want the people that listen. So uh, the head of project Puluang, Puluang, the head of project of Puluang, uh, he he had this personality. So I think uh, the process of selected people to to do this research is very important. And another factor that I think um, we have to be patient to listen with uh, local people voice. Um, we have to, to have the theory of, of committee meeting from small to large and large to small meeting. So we uh, can bridge the gap uh, uh, of need and, and uh, the process of working uh, in, in this process of uh, community meeting. And another tool that we use that uh, we try to have the, the activity to push them to, to, uh, to working together. And then uh, they can uh, adapt and just find the way to working together. Uh, I think uh, the people uh, the meeting and also the, the work uh, can can lead bridge the gap between uh, ranger and local people in the area. Great, thank, thank you. you so much. I hope we heard that, Antoinette. Do you have any any other questions? Now we can hear you. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so, I mean, and one last question, I think, from the room, which is from, from me, if nobody else would like to unmute themselves and ask. Um, do, do you find that there is a problem implementing countrywide policies uh, or a central policy? Because a lot seems to depend. You just said that, that um, this work depends very much on the uh, the work at Paul Luang depends very much on the character of the person in charge of the project. Do you think there is a possibility to make it a, a central policy that uh, local surrounding national parks need to be involved and consulted in, in HEC management? Or do you think we have to work park by park? Hmm. I think this question is very good and we also <laughs> Uh, face this uh, issue in Thailand. Uh, for central policy, I think uh, uh, 
we have to to have the session to decide the policy together between uh, central government and local people, and we we try we try very hard to to do it many times in Khao Yai and uh, in 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 Bangkok that uh, we set up the the community meeting and we invite central government and uh, central uh, people to to talk with us and to listen to our research project in uh, that uh, local people do about research. Uh, Sometimes we, we get the right people uh, to, to listen. And sometimes we, uh, we just get wrong people uh, to listen to us. I think uh, it's like a try and in order to, to find the, the, the right people in the central government to listen to us. But I think the best option we have now is uh, to uh, to make the best data and best research for for community in the ground, scientific ground. We have a strong information and strong community network. Uh, when the central government have the right question, uh, we can talk again to to make the possible policy and the great policy together. Uh, another uh, approach that uh, we, we try to connect with uh, author academic that uh, have the same idea with us that uh, community or human dimension is uh, one factor to solve this problem. Uh, we, we, we try to uh, talk with them and, and persuade them that uh, from our experience and information and research that uh, we, we really uh, need community participation and, and from, the, from the top that uh, we, we want them to uh, participate in, in this uh, management. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, for the questions from Facebook, Zach or U, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, and ask the questions? Yes. Um, so I have a lot of questions from Facebook. Um, oh. The first <laughs> first one from Dr. Ingrid. So the question is: Do you know uh, any finance mechanism that are up and running and working? Like you know the um, one that pay money, compensate money back to to the farmer or villagers who get like their crops area get damaged by the elephants? Um, I, I confess that I, I, I have no knowledge about this. And we, we try to, to build the, the best compensation approach in Thailand now. We have many, uh, many, many standards from government, you know, uh, is have uh, different uh, level of compensation in Thailand from the government, from central government, from the province, uh, from NGO in the area, from yeah. national park in Thailand. Uh, we, we have uh, many compensation, but uh, it's not enough in local people opinion. And just like uh, when you uh, lose Durian uh, tree uh, for one for one tree uh, they, they cost uh, it cost a lot, a lot fifty thousand baht but for Thai compensation they pay you only one thousand baht you know it's it's not uh, reasonable for for them so we we try to to research uh, the best mechanism in Thailand now. But uh, we want uh, some economists or other researcher that have uh, knowledge about the compensation to show us. Yes, I think there are. Or if, if, you, if, if you can share the knowledge, uh, we are uh, very glad. Uh, I think yes, there, there are many. Side. There are many models are around the world, um, but none of them none of them is perfect. But there's there's, there's to insurance up in China that Becky was talking about a few weeks ago. And, various others but, but none of them is perfect and I think almost all of them everyone is agreed um, it's never enough uh, compensation either yeah. 
Okay, another question from Zach. How active were the local villagers in participating the project? Were they excited or confident in you? Again, this. How active were the local villagers um, who participated oh. your project? Okay, uh, I, I think this is uh, 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 the important issue for for this uh, for this project because uh, we have uh, many people uh, uh, leave leave our project uh, between our research uh, because. Uh, uh, some local people want uh, the fast way to to solve the problem. They they just want compensation. They just want budget to uh, to to build a, the house construction like a, a electric fence, something like that. Uh, but I think uh, this research uh, can uh, like a filter, you know, uh, can uh, help the process to to get the right people to, to do about research uh, because uh, we cannot uh, turn to be the actor in, in the area. We just uh, the research group uh, to create some new knowledge to, uh, to local and, and turn the local people to be a good researcher uh, in, in the area. So uh, I think some uh forty percent of of local people leave our project and some new people also <laughs> come into our project too it's like a dynamic in in the area but now uh in in many area we we have a, a strong team now uh, because they they understand the the objective of uh, our project and they, they see some benefit like uh, they, when they get the data, they can use the data uh, to do something like uh, in Khao Yai, they, they, they want to set up the hotspot of uh, ecotourism point that they monitor the elephant and cow uh, come out of the forest. And uh, in Tai Long Yen, they, they get this, the, the method to control the elephant and they also, uh, uh, try to to teach other uh, local group to to uh, to adopt their, their technique. Uh, so it's uh, uh, this this uh, this this group of researcher in, in the local they uh, have the strong team now. Any question? Yes, more and more questions will come. Um, <laughs> the next one is from Rachel. So actually many questions like how do how do the spotlight and sound trigger works? Like is by motion or, or how? And then for the sound triggers, is that to wake the, the villagers up or to um, deter the elephant off of the location? Oh, okay. Uh... Villagers say that uh, the sound trigger just uh, in in the first expectation they just want the sound trigger to to be an alarm for for them to to wake up, but uh, sometimes elephant also scare the sound and and they uh, moving away from from the point. Uh, but for spotlight, uh, they reported that uh, it's it's work for them. Uh, because elephant uh, don't walk cut through their farm, uh, they just uh, walk in the outer area. So it's, uh, this method can reduce the damage for them now. And they feel safety. The, the important thing because uh, uh, the past time they were really scared about elephant and, and they can see the elephant clearly. When they have the, the, the light of spotlight around their farm, they, they can see elephant and they, uh, they, they can uh, use some uh, repellent they have. And also they feel confident to, to, to stay at that place, you know. 
but then how like how it work when elephant walk past and they, you know it's, you have the can see the motion sensor or uh, how the light will will start it or it's after sun set and it's automatically on uh, it's, it's automatically on yes uh, this uh, this uh, yes it's on. after the sunset uh, the some some point they just turn uh, turn turn the light on and some uh, some point they, they have uh, some uh, automatic uh, mechanism to to open the light uh, when in the case when the elephant come into the in, into the farm they also use uh, high power spotlight to to point to the elephant yes uh, it, they drive a car and and follow the elephant and point the spotlight uh, directly to to the elephant. And how long it has been running for for these two methods? Now they use uh, allow three months for test and and it still work. Uh, that's very good. The other one from Andy Merck is the. Um, he said, like normally the alternative crop is generally um, no to increase human elephant conflict. How you would avoid this one? Increase the, the conflict? Yes. Oh, like, I, I don't think so now because the, from some information uh, from our, our few, uh, when elephant uh, walk past by, they, they, don't, uh, they don't complain about it. It's just uh, like a, you you plant the, the ginger or the plant that the, the head uh, under the ground, they, they uh, have a little damage for, for them. So they don't complain about it. And you, you, you can see if uh, something like a uh, chivalry or something like a uh, tumulic elephant don't interested about it and they, uh, they just walk to other farm, and I think from from this evidence, uh, uh, they they don't complain about it. It's, it's not an increase increase the conflict, but if elephant uh, really uh, eat this plant, uh, I think we uh, we we have to to find other plants. The first one we have to find other plant because uh, uh, this group of people don't want to use other method to to confront the elephant directly they just they just want to to change uh, the landscape that avoid uh, the damage you know they just don't want to confront directly uh, i think this is uh, the smart idea because uh, uh, we have to have our landscape uh, that can absorb the intensity of elephant human conflict you know uh, i think just like uh, we we want uh, the small farm that have high product because if we plant a lot of uh, monoculture monocrop uh, we uh, it's have a chance that uh, you increase the conflict with elephant if we uh, we use the farm to other plant and protect it uh, some tool and you uh, left auto area for elephant, I think uh, it can reduce the, dam the damage and uh, people also feel uh, not hate about <laughs> hate to elephant. Yes, I think this, uh, this uh, strategy uh, government also interest uh, in, in the future because um, from from the last meeting with uh, government, um, they have uh, some strategy about uh, land use planning or land use support to change from uh, also plan or something like a friendly landscape in the future. Uh, I think it is a hot issue that uh, we we have to to try to think about it, and we have to do research to find the best uh, 
alternative landscape to live with elephant in the future. Thank you. Um, I think also the other one is the question from um, Kun Chitipum or Dr. Team. It's similar like with this one, but then like because most uh, of the conflict happen near the cultivation area. Is there any research on methods to keep the elephant inside the protected areas by maybe using alternative, like alter altering habitats or maybe adding man-made salt lake that would drive them back to and stay in the forest? Okay, uh, in, in my PhD, I, I also do the research about uh, habitat manipulation by salt lake and small patch of food pen. Uh, but it's not been uh, published now. Uh, uh, for 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 my opinion, I think it's uh, it's have the small effect to uh, to attract the elephant uh, come come back to the forest. And another implementation in Kuiburi by uh, uh, change the landscape to grassland. Uh, they, they plant the grass in, inside inside the, the area. Uh, they just uh, the guy uh, that involved this project. Uh, they, they tell us that uh, they noticed that uh, the family group, some family group, uh, stays still at, at that place, but the male the male guy the bull uh, they, they they just visit and come out of the forest. So I think uh, we have we have to to think about it. Uh, we maybe uh, we use some this study to uh, habitat manipulation inside the forest, but uh, we we have to have a, we must have a protective strategy uh, along the, the buffer zone. I think we cannot depend on only one method in, in the area. We have uh, to have uh, protective measure and also uh, habitat manipulation in the area. And we have to consider about the context in the area. Uh, some villager cannot, cannot stand elephant so Maybe some uh, in, in that area we have to use fence in the area, but some area the people want to share the land with elephant. Uh, maybe change just change the landscape to, to more fairly uh, plan and habitat liberation inside. Uh, maybe this strategy is fit with them. Uh, we have to, to look into the context in the area. Okay, um, the other question is from Juliana. Um, since you are in the Zoom, would you like to unmute yourself and ask direct to Kun Pichet? Sure. Um, I was just wondering if the, if the cooperation with other aspects of wildlife, do you do anything of that? It might be mostly for yeah, cooperation. Oh wait, it's not working. Oh, it's working now. Um, like for example, with reptiles or with tigers, maybe, or with bats, even. If you do any cooperations, like, because I know you use the spotlight to repel kind of the the animals. Does it have an impact on the other? And do you work with other aspects of the wildlife? Oh, okay. Uh, in for our villager report, uh, they also use uh, to repel the monkey. <laughs> But it is not work. Uh, yes, uh, the, the monkey also come into the farm and they use the spotlight to repel it. But the negative consequence uh, is is very really good one to to detect it. Uh, I think uh, in the next period we 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 have to to concern about it, like a, how the effect of of right uh, effect to the bad. Yes, right. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
and you did mention one project where they're working with um they're looking at elephants and gaur in the same place in, in kawiyai as well so it, it, in some places yes, that's yes. certainly going on yes yes uh this uh, this area freeland and and also anantala that you, you john you you know about it. uh yes uh, we 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 also support uh that that area and they they try to uh to monitor monitor about uh, elephant and cow because they, they come together you know sometimes uh, elephant come out of the forest bird and the cow follow the elephant and sometimes the cow can damage the plant more than the elephant you know because uh, Right, oh, any more questions? Yes, sorry. Um, yes, at the last one from Oswin, I don't think it's a question, but I think he would like to know more information about non-violent methods that used to repelling the elephants. So maybe um, he can share the contact that how whoever inter interested to know more about this can contact Kun Pichet for further information. Sure, I know Oswin. I also know Rachel, who would like, who would like more details. On, I should think for Cambodia on the spotlights and things. So, um, if anybody would like any more information, if you don't have Pichet's uh, uh, contact, please do contact me or contact us through the Facebook page, and uh, we will put you in touch. That's it for me. No more questions. Okay, well, great. Thank you. All that remains then for me to do is to thank uh, Pijet, Kun Pijet very, very much. Thank you all for listening. Uh, thank you for a great presentation and thank you for all of the questions. It was, it was fantastic. Um, next week, uh, we haven't advertised it yet because we're having a little bit of a technical hitch getting hold of the details, but we'll also be on human elephant conflict and we'll be showcasing a, a cheap to build fence um, non-harmful fence for elephants that appears to have been working in Tsavo in uh, in Kenya and uh, they published a paper on it and they would like to talk about it so uh, so that's next week's presentation um, and we'll get you details about that soon so everybody might want to tune in and, and learn more about that um, we have one more message I'll oh, just to thank you that's great um, uh, tomorrow we will have to be going back to the lockdown live streams and I will be going at 4 p.m. and then 7.30 Friday morning for those of you who like that. So less scientific, less less detailed, more me rambling and just being hanging out in the grassland with elephants. So if anybody would like to join those, you can. Um, and then a note from our sponsors here at Anantara, where I'm very, very happily ensconced sitting up here in the bar. Um, so thank you very much for having us. And if anybody is in Thailand that would like to come and join us and see the elephants, our elephants, unfortunately not wild, they're captive elephants, but they are, they're doing wild elephant impressions, hanging around in the grassland with their friends. Um, if you would like to come and see us, please do get drop the Anantara a line, Anantara Golden Triangle, and you can uh, come and see that. And um, we don't, we, we support as, uh, we do support some wild elephant projects around Southeast Asia, um, one in, in uh, Cambodia and we have two happening in Thailand, including the one with the Gao that uh, Kun Chen just talked about. So if you'd like to come and see our captive elephants pretending to be wild elephants and in, Thai, in that way help support, help us support wild elephants. Um, please do come to the Anantara Court and try and call them kind enough to let, it, let me sit in their bar and talk to you. Um, and that's it. I think I will give the final word to Kumpi Chet. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. And uh, last word, Kumpi Chet. Uh, thank you very much for, for every people to interest our presentation. And uh, for Thailand, we, we, we want uh, support from uh, everybody and uh, I hope uh, in the future, if we can meet in uh, some meeting or some conference, uh, we can share uh, information and idea together uh, because uh, we want uh, many people to, to join us to, to make this uh, situation uh, better in the future. Thank you very much, every people. Bye-bye.